Now what we want to do is look at a possible model problem that we can use the RNN technique for. Please take us through this. So let's look at cardiac arrhythmia. What it is in simple terms is basically when you have heartbeat or heart rhythm that's, uh, that's dysfunctional. So it could be too slow or too fast or just irregular. And it can have serious implications. Um, let's look at how we can predict arrhythmia with RNNs as a, as a model problem. All right, so here's an example. <coughs> and you can see that we have no clear heartbeats in this picture. Well, take us through this description of the signal from a heartbeat. So uh, the electrocardiogram, which is what you get done if you if you suspected arrhythmia and you went to the ER, is essentially a signal, a 1D signal, of, which measures the voltage across certain nodes on the heart as a function of time. So you can see what a normal heartbeat should look like. You have different segments. You have the P segment, your PR, QRS, and all of that. So all of those need to be uh, regular, and they will be checked by, uh, by a doctor to make sure you don't have arrhythmia. And again, the key point here is that you can very easily think of this as a voltage graph as a function of time. So uh, when they look at this, the QRS, the yellow bar in the middle, repeats again. So that, that peak from one, one QRS to the next QRS, the interval then is the interval between the beats. And then you take a look at that yep. processing and you get the heart rate. That's correct. Basically the instantaneous heart rate. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's see how we can proceed to use RNN in two different scenarios. Mm -hmm. Here's the first scenario, binary classification. Uh, so imagine the two classes you want to predict is arrhythmia or not, 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 no arrhythmia. Uh, the inputs in this case, which will denote with X, for the ith sample, which is your ith patient or the ith ECG that you gathered, the inputs are going to be uh, voltages as uh, for t time steps at um, uh, voltage. Uh, okay, voltages measured on ECG at t time steps, and the output, which will denote with yi, is going to be your uh, uh, one for uh, arrhythmia and zero for non-arrhythmic cases. So I have a question for you. Uh, we have the the ith. EKG, that's the ith sample, it has n recordings uh, equally spaced. And um, what about the number of time steps in this? Like, uh, for example, in a cardiac care unit, you might want to have recording to see how the patient is doing for eight hours. Mm -hmm. So if we have eight hours, that's a lot of seconds, 3,600. Uh, seconds in an hour and there's like it's 25,000 it, mm -hmm. it numbers get really big so you could have of the order of mega samples of time data yeah so how, how would we do this is it feasible to have mega samples of time data to use RNNs so usually what people do when you have a time sequence that's that long and uh, in a case like ECG, you're probably interested in more local diagnoses. So people will look at windows of the entire uh, sequence. And uh, otherwise, if you, if you take the entire sequence, it might not be clinically relevant, uh, the, the, your ultimate output. And also from a computational standpoint, when you get to the, towards the end of your sequence, you will forget information from earlier on. So to, in a problem like this, will be, the data will be processed in chunks. Or in in chunks, okay. So we'll, we'll talk more about what's a reasonable mm -hmm. size of number of chunks in yeah. terms of the time stepping. Mm -hmm. So that's binary classification. Let's look at another way to do this. Yeah, so with the same setup, with the same inputs, uh, voltages, the function of time, the sampled, uh, the, the sampled uniformly across the whole input. We can change the output to a continuous variable. Let's say instead of you want to, uh, instead of predicting uh, arrhythmia or non-arrhythmic cases, you want to predict the heart rate. So that's a continuous variable, and we can imagine it's probably somewhere between 50 beats per minute or 150 beats per minute, depending on the state of the patient and you know their health 
conditions and all that. But and then in this case, your output is going to be a continuous value. So you're probably going to uh, uh, optimize this with something like a mean square error or an absolute error rather than cross entropy, which you would do in the case of the binary classification. With the same setup, you can do regression or classification. Is the point? Okay. Well, that's good. So now what we're left to do is we've got this broad understanding, a model problem. Now we have to get our hands dirty and look mm -hmm. at the basic architecture at the basic neuron level and time-stepping level. Yep. Mm -hmm.